Melanie, sorry, you're on mute. My goodness, I'm on mute. That's a bad start. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Melanie Dune. I hit that mute button. I'm telling you I did. Um, well, I'm here from New York to talk photography, but particularly photography on the go. So I'm so glad you're here and we're going to have a great hour. Um, the most important thing to me is that you have a good time, you learn something, and also you ask some questions because I would like this to be an exchange and you did actually take away something. So I'm going to share my screen now so we can get chatting. So let me give you, first of all, a little background about myself because you might not actually know who I am. Um, I am Melanie Dune. I'm in New York and I plan for the next hour. This is how it's going to work. First, we're going to do a little poll. Then I'm going to tell you and show you some of my work, show you some sneaky, sneaky behind the scenes stuff. And then we're going to take a few, a little look at some of the work that was actually submitted earlier by some fellow creatively people. So first of all, just so I know who's here, let's um, do a poll. Let's get to the poll. Okay, I think you can all see it, but I'll read along with you. So how are you feeling today? Are you feeling pretty darn good? Are you meh, not bad, or have you seen better days? Um, is photography a hobby or a profession? That will help me because um, then I'm gonna be able to actually direct my talk so that it, it's worth it for you. Um, the next one is what topics do you have the most questions about? Equipment, um, subjects, lighting, composition, editing, or do you just wanna gossip and hear about my personal life? Next one is how do you capture your images? Do you use film? Do you use digital or are you using your phone? Oops, hang on a second. And my last question is, when you are photographing on the go, what is your, the final destination of your images? Are you putting them on Instagram? Are you looking to put them on your website? Or is there something else that I don't know about that I need to learn about? So um, I'll give you another second to finish the poll. And then I shall, um, end the poll. Creatively, you tell me when to end the poll. Okay, yay. Answer number one is everybody's feeling pretty darn good. So am I. I mean, we can't be in the room together, so this is going to be our next best bet. Number two, ooh, we have professionals on the, that's making me a little bit nervous. <laughs> um, number three, what topics do you have the most questions? Lighting. Okay, I, that, I've got you. I've got your back. Followed by Composition and editing. Okay, I'm glad that nobody really wants to know about um, my personal life because it's kind of boring. Um, not really. The next thing is very few people are using film. I'm interested. And it's close between digital and the phone. And the last thing is where are you putting these on Instagram? So um, got it. All right. Well, let's get going. So uh, first of all, I'm going to just tell you a little bit about me. And literally, if you have any questions, send them through and we will, um, or I will try to answer them. So as I said before, I'm Melanie Dune. I live in New York City. I am actually born in Chicago and um, I didn't have a camera hanging around my neck at age five. I got into it in high school. My grandfather was a political reporter and said, you know what, you need to know how to write and take photographs. So there I went into the digital darkroom and basically learned black and white photography, color photography, and um, definitely film photography. That's how I started. Um, I moved to New York and I got a job at a photo studio, which was great because previously I had only known how to do photography with no lighting. So by getting a job in a photo studio, it was um, a studio in New York called Industria, I was able to work in the equipment room, make those $8 an hour, and also 
learn how to use the equipment, which was essential because I had no idea the difference between a ring light and a chimera and why would you use an octobank, um, things like that. So that definitely was a great way and a, a wonderful way to start my training. After that, I assisted photographers. I was lucky enough to work with Richard Avedon, Brigitte Lacombe, um, lots and lots of photographers. And I got to actually see how they did things, how they treated their clients. Like I remember Avedon always set up an area that was a client area, which was such a good idea. And he, we would put his books out. So when his clients were sitting around, they would pick up his books and see more Avedon. Um, taught me about a lot about lighting. It taught me, um, I learned how to snake a toilet. And most importantly, I probably learned um, that I was never too good to do any job on a shoot. So for example, even today, if, a, um, if somebody walks in and they say, I'd like a cup of coffee, I never feel too proud to actually go get um, the coffee because, or I don't feel like it's not too proud. I guess I feel um, that it's my job. Um, so I have done six books. Uh, the two most, uh, shall we say, famous ones are called My Last Supper, where I thought of the idea, I pitched the idea, I sold the book, I produced the book, and I photographed it. That was 100 chefs and their last suppers how they viewed their last suppers, and it was portraits. The most well-known one, which maybe some of you have seen, was Anthony Bourdain naked um, with a bone in front of him, which you are lucky enough to see later. I've also um, called myself a project queen because I love to not only do the work that I'm commissioned to do, but I really love to think of ideas and execute them. For example, during the pandemic, when my exhibition was canceled and all my work was canceled, I decided to hit the streets of New York City with my camera, capture what I saw. I ended up making a book, which I called my pandemic diary. And I also made a, a, a bunch of scarves, which you can see on the wall behind me in my studio here, which I called New York in Bloom. And um, those were just ways for me to express myself during the, um, you know, during this terrible time. And actually, I still, I see a question here from Ashley. Hi, Ashley. And she's saying, um, it's relevant now, when shooting, especially on the go, do you still find yourself having an emotional connection to the photos you take? Absolutely. Maybe even too much of a connection. I think that, um, it is so important to care about what you shoot. And I remember actually at that uh, front desk at Industria, the photo studio, one of the girls next to me said, oh, I would never shoot for People Magazine or shoot for, and I said, why? Like everything should be as good as everything else. So I'm always incredibly connected. I was so moved by um, just, going around New York during the pandemic, probably as moved as I am when I shoot celebrities. So I'm gonna move on to um, the first slide here, which is studio portraits. Again, some of these people, back to Ashley's question, I only meet for an hour or two hours or even less, but it doesn't matter because I feel like it's so important to just connect with them anyway, try to connect to them. So the, actually that brings me to them. I'm going to skip to the middle portrait. So this is John Cena, who I didn't know who he was, to be honest. I hadn't seen Daddy's Home. Um, and the, I watched it afterwards, by the way. So he's a wrestler. It was for Parade Magazine. And the brief was that they wanted John Cena on a purple backdrop, my favorite color. And they wanted him to be wild and like a wrestler and loud and bold. But John Cena walked in, he was very quiet. He said, what do you want me to do? Where shall I stand? And he was very thoughtful. He went to the catering, got himself a plate, sat down, ate it. I tried to engage him in conversation. He wasn't interested. 
And I realized he was much more thoughtful than actually I was told to present him. So one of my rules and studio shooting is that I always try, or just in any shoot, if I'm hired by a client, I always fulfill the client's brief first because they're paying you, right? But I do try to slip in or finish with the shot that I want. So this middle shot of John Cena was, Cena, yeah, was actually how I saw John Cena. It was not what ended up on the cover of the magazine. Um, on the left, we have Joel Gray. And this is a, a really interesting to the people that, are, that care about lighting. It's that nightmare of you do not want to have the lighting reflected in somebody's glasses if you can help it, right? Also, glasses tend to make lines, which I probably have myself here, around the eyes but I wanted the lighting to look dramatic and I wanted to make sure, so I had to be very careful here. If you follow my cursor, you can see that I didn't want too much shadow underneath the nose. Um, then we have John McEnroe um, who wasn't, didn't love this picture. <laughs> I found out in a subsequent shoot. This was shot for Wimbledon. Uh, when he was doing the commentary, I think he still is. And I had this preconceived idea that we would um, shoot him, you know, cause he was such a badass and always, you know, throwing things and being so dramatic that we would actually have him frame his face with this um, racket. And again, I had to be careful of lighting because I didn't want to have the strings of the tennis racket reflect weirdly under his eyes. So the light was pretty much right above my head. And I, I think it was actually a raw head. If you look in his eyes, you can probably see that. Um, so on to my next studio. Um, I also want to just quickly answer Anna Paskovitz's question, digital versus film, which is my favorite. Well, I don't, my clients don't accept film anymore. So for me to go to a shoot, take the pictures in film, digitize them and send it to them is just another generation. But boy, did I love my dark room. I had a beautiful dark, dark black and white dark room. And um, I, I cannot imagine how many chemicals that I've sucked up in my life, but I absolutely loved it and definitely miss it. And another reason that I miss um, film is because when you're shooting with film, you don't have that, what I call the digital twitch, where you look at the back of the camera, you're checking what you got. You can't help it. It's irresistible. We do it with our phones too. But there's this unknown with film that I always really, um, you know, I used to appreciate that one, that so much. Um, anyway, moving on to some color photography. Now, I do believe there's a difference between your intention, whether you're shooting black and white or you're shooting color, because sometimes when it's black and white, it should be black and white because there's no color in the picture. Whereas if you look here at the comedian Steve Martin, this picture wouldn't work in black and white, right? Because he has a purple, again, favorite color, <laughs> um, bow tie. So that is sort of, um, you know, a little reason to have color. Um, the middle picture of Rupi Kaur, um, the poet, is in color because I photographed a book that was all in color. So sometimes you just don't have the choice, right? And then, I mean, if you're gonna shoot a bloody bone, you better do it in color, right? Um, so not only do I shoot in the studio, I also shoot on location and that's what we're talking about. And in a way, all of this photography is on the go, you know, because um, whether we're out with our phones, whether we're sitting, like I have a ring light here with you right now, whether we are using um, a snappy happy, my favorite is here and I am not sponsored or we're shooting with fancy, you know, cannons. It's all, the mentality is all on the go. Um, so these were three pretty tricky situations. The first here is a chef and this boat was rocking. I needed to light her because the sun was so bright. It was impossible to shade her. 
So she's squinting a lot. She is, she has a tendency to squint anyway, but this was a tough shoot because um, the elements were definitely against us. And I found that um, a lot, I found that um, also happened a lot with these Kenny Chesney shoots, which is here in the middle, because Kenny Chesney likes to be photographed in St. John's and then you're on the island and you have sand and you have, you know, all the elements that sound fun for a vacation can definitely make a photo shoot hard. Um, a little interesting side note about um, this photograph of Kenny Chesney was I actually wanted Kenny to wear this blue shirt. He is typically seen in t-shirts. If you go to my website, you can see the album covers there. And I said, oh, Kenny, this looks so great. Um, this is so uh, you. And this is actually gonna address your question, Heather Fear, because just slipping this in, she says, do you feel it's important to have your own personal or creative style before marketing and branding yourself? Well, I'm gonna answer the, this through Kenny because I wanted Kenny to wear this button down shirt. Kenny wears t-shirts. So after the shoot, he took the photograph, a photo, favorite photograph with the t-shirt and he took this to a mall, like the Green Hills Mall in Nashville. And he asked his fans, none of them chose the button down shirt. So I was imposing on Kenny. So though I do feel it is important to try to brand yourself and have try to have the right look and try to, it is definitely also, um, you know, a um, it, try to stay out of the, comp, the picture if you can. But this was sort of a fun, um, a very fun one that came. Um, Jill Biden, I photographed her when she was, um, when her husband was the vice president, our now president was the vice president. And I had allotted, I like to get to, to a photo shoot two hours. I, I like to be in at the location two hours before because you just never know what's gonna happen. You don't know what hiccups are coming along the way. And um, I was held up at the White House security for four hours. So by the time we cleared security, I was supposed to be shooting. So thankfully, mercifully, the Secret Service saw us and said, saw maybe panic in my eyes and took us through the West Wing, hello Obama, that was super fun, down the elevator, across to the other building. And when I arrived, she was so lovely. And she said, don't worry, we know you were late. Um, this is so hard. Do not like worry about it, I'll make time for you. And my friend at the time, oh, he still is the, the food critic for the New York Times. And sometimes I like to sneak a little something fun in a photograph. So he had just written a, a, a restaurant review. So Jill Biden is actually holding, oh, sorry, my friend's um, article. <laughs> so that was sort of like a little inside scoop that we thought was really funny. Um, Hank asked me, how did I find my job at the studio? Well, Hank, actually, originally I was, I had gone to Paris to become Henrietta Cartier-Bresson and worked at Agence Gamma and tried to do sort of photojournalist things and uh, realized that I couldn't survive in Paris. So what I did was I read American Photography Magazine, so I guess I'm dating myself, and I saw a story about this incredible photo studio in New York that was the center of everything. In fact, they even had Madonna's sex book party there. I mean, if that isn't a sell, I don't know what is. So I ended up um, going there. I ripped it out. I came back from Paris. I went there with the paper. And I said, I, I mean, this is clearly the place I wanna work. Do you guys have a job? And um, the woman said, well, what's your name? And I said, my name is Melanie. And she said, that's my name. And I said, so I'm hired? Um, but actually the job I got was in, at the front desk, which kind of was a bummer, but eventually I was able to work my way into the equipment room, which was great. Um, so moving towards on the go, I also photograph, you know, places. I've been lucky enough to be invited to do a, uh, 
I did a residency, artist in residency in a beautiful place called Yushua in Trancoso, Brazil. And the brief was they'd like to have me there, but I had to leave a piece of work that was inspired by the location, which was so much easier for the other artists because they could make things out of coconuts and they could make things out of, and I, I had made one rule, which was no people, no portraits. So I did, I did not allow myself to shoot any portraits to try to exercise my muscles, you know, my photographic eye. I made a, um, a list that I would only look at texture, color, light. Um, and I really, you know, just exercise the muscle of not looking at people. Then sometimes I get that very difficult assignment, which you guys I'm sure have all had, which is to photograph a group. So this is a group of chefs. You recognize probably some of them. There's David Chang, Scott Conant, Jose Andreas. This is Christina Tosi from Milk Bar. Um, these guys are the blue, um, blue, the sushi restaurant. And this was actually a comp. So these were shot in Las Vegas. These were shot in New York. And um, it was hard, but important that every, the lighting remained the same, that the people remained, as we moved the set, we measured every single detail. So we knew exactly where the lights were. We knew exactly where I was, where the tripod was. So we couldn't mess it up. Um, and then other times I focused my lens on things. So the, this picture here on the left was a collaboration I did with the actress Bridget Moynihan who wanted to do a book about shoes. And I, um, it was famous women and their most brilliant story about a pair of shoes. But what was fun was taking the shoes and actually using um, them as still lifes because I had never really shot still life. So this was actually at the writer's house. This was her um, breakfast board. And we just kind of like, you know, shot that. Let's see if there are any questions. Um, it says, uh, let's see if there's anything that's relevant. I mean, there are questions, but um, have you ever had the element so wrong that you've had to stop and shoot a different day? Comes from Ray Nicholas. Um, yes, <laughs> I sure have, Ray. Um, the most poignant case of that was Rachel Ray uh, has a magazine, The Chef, the cook um, called Rachel Ray every day. And she, they, they often came up with these big concepts for her. So her concept was, uh, this one was baseball. So they built an entire, in a studio, a stadium. They built bleachers, there were hot dogs, there were outfits and Rachel Ray's plane was canceled and she couldn't come the next day. So everything had to be measured, broken down and then rebuilt so that she, we could do it another day. So um, that was definitely a tough one. Um, so things, I love things. <laughs> and this was a project, speaking of projects, this is um, a project that I did on my own. So I'm gonna actually direct this answer to Gregory, who's asking, um, what advice would you give to young creatives who are just starting out? So this, this is a project that just came in my head and I executed by myself. So my first piece of advice is shoot, 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 but also practice and try. So this was a project um, for a long time after the chef books, people kept saying to me, oh, or introducing me as Melanie is a food photographer. And I was like, no, I'm not. And they'd be like, Melanie is a chef photographer. And I kept and I guess I still do wonder why people don't just call me a photographer, but nevertheless, one day, a couple summers ago, I thought to myself, well, I keep, why is it irritating me that people are calling me a food photographer? Maybe I should just explore this. So I decided I would pick 10 places that I love in New York and I would get on a bicycle, put a camera over my back, no lights, and I would go and see what I could do with food. So this one on the right here is Joe's Pizza, a really famous pizza place and one of my favorites in Manhattan. I bought the pizza. I went across the street to the park 
and I made this picture, which always makes me laugh. And by the way, has ended up on like a lot of people's walls. Um, I love a Negroni. And this middle picture is from the restaurant Prune. And I just thought to myself, what can I do with this? I have a drink. I've paid for the drink. What can I do with it? And I ended up making a whole series with drips and drops. So, um, and then, you know, so, so the point being, try it. If you have an idea, just try it, um, work it out. Think about what you want. Think about why you're drawn to it and then try to execute it. Um, my work is published, as I've mentioned. These are just three examples of, of books of people that I um, that are a little bit different and that were really fun. Um, so now I'm gonna show you, let's actually just quickly answer some questions before I get into some serious behind the scenes, which I'm only showing you guys. Um, so Sophia Tibbs wants to know, do I prefer portrait or environmental? I love it all. I like shooting the pizza as much as I like shooting the president. I hope that's a satisfying answer. Um, so Tiara Gordon wants to know, I hope I pronounced your name right, sorry. Uh, do you have any tips on how to photograph a moving object? Ooh and still get a good image. I mean, that's always hard, right? I mean, I, you have to be on a tripod, right? Unless you're gonna pan. If you're panning, let's pretend it's a car, right? You have two choices in my book, but I'm sure all of you, many of you professionals can weigh in and maybe direct message her. Um, but you either can be on one monopod or tripod, and then as the car comes, you can follow the car or you can be stationary and let it blur. I hope that's, satis that's satisfying and um, answering your question. Um, so Tiana says, she finds her most connection when she's traveling, when I'm connecting with the world around me on the journey of my everyday life. Well, that is a really important point. I agree with you, Tiana, because there isn't really like, everything is inspirational. I remember when I was in high school and I, I was at this bus stop and I thought, what's the picture here? Like there's a picture everywhere and you guys can make it. You gotta stop being intimidated about kinds of cameras. And that's why I really wanted to show you a little bit of my work and how I do it and encourage you to shoot on the go, which I will show you later. But first of all, let me show you an organized shoot. Um, so this was, how I work. And I work like this on the go as well. So when I'm going to approach a situation, when I'm walking the streets of New York City or I'm going to the White House, I plan, first of all, what am I taking with me? So this here is one example of a shoot I did for the painter Amy Sherald. And um, Amy Sherald's most famous work was the, um, oops, some, it skipped ahead, was um, the, I'm going to show you here if you can see, she was the one who got to do the um, uh, um, Michelle Obama portrait. So she um, needed me to photograph her work so that she could paint from it. So I always make a lighting design. This is my lighting design. This is my um, equipment list. And here's the behind the scenes video. You can see her speaking. You can see that I'm not only barefoot, but I'm also on a tripod. And um, you can just look at the shoot. You can see all the lights. Particularly, it's hard to paint shadows, apparently, um, just from memory. So it was very important that the light looked like sunlight and that uh, we could see all the textures on the feet. So we, we did a far away and then I also did details. You can see all the lights. can see that digital tech. And then let me show you the final result. There you go. So you can see how we created sunlight 
you can see the shadows and also what an unusual commission. I mean, who would ever think that, oops, sorry, that a photographer, portrait photographer would be photographing for a famous artist that she painted from the pictures. So that was a pretty incredible, incredible um, moment just to be part of and to witness and also to use your technical skills. Um, so I have a little example here of, um, well, does anybody have any questions? Let's see here. Um, how, from Amanda Maloney, and this was an earlier question. Sorry, I didn't get to it, Amanda. How do you develop an eye for finding a good subject, good lighting, or a good location? Well, it's the same thing that I was saying earlier. What attracts you? Like when you're scrolling through Instagram, right? And you're looking at a picture or you're scrolling through creatively, what stops you? Actually, creatively is even a better platform because you can see more. What, why are you stopping? There's something, that's the question. What is interesting to you about it? Is it the colors? Does it look cool? Why does it look cool? So those are things to ask yourself. And then of course you do want to set yourself up for success. I mean, you don't want to plan an outside shoot when the forecast is rainy. And when it is rainy, you need to have a backup plan. So I think that, um, you know, you have to set yourself up to succeed and you also have to give yourself, um, you know, as much preparation. Like I said, even when I walk out the door, you know, I always make sure, did I charge my snappy happy? Does it have, do I have a spare battery? Is it working? You know, just ask yourself these questions so that you can be free to see and to shoot. So um, here's a little example that I just did for you guys um, of a bowl, simple bowl of lemons. This is, we'll call this um, making lemonade. So this is a bowl of lemon, random bowl of lemons that I found on my friend's counter. So the shapes, the round inside the round, the ovals, the shape of the bowl, the way the light was coming in, all of this completely caught my eye. And I thought, okay, this is what I'm going to, um, you know, shoot and sh I'm going to examine this. I'm going to see why I like this. So the first thing I did was get out my, as I've shown you before, you think it was like sponsored by Canon. It is not. Um, and I got the bowl of lemons, pulled them into the light. Then I tried to hide the butts of the lemons because, you know, you want to, again, set yourself up for success. You're not shooting butts. Then I started shooting. And as I've said, oops, we just saw that, excuse me. We need to look at things from all angles. I looked at it from above, horizontal, vertical. I tried to change my perspective because it's so annoying these cameras don't have viewfinders. Oops, the chair's in the background, move the chair. While I'm here, let me look from that angle. But I knew the whole time in my head that I was gonna be, I'm interested in the graphics. Oh, let's get higher. Let's, um, you know, and, and what, again, what really intrigued me was the shapes and the colors. So that was what I needed to focus on. Already saw that. And now we will show one more video. And again, trying different angles, appreciating the light, using the spot meter so I could get exactly the exposure that I wanted, tweaking the lemons. Then of course you have to edit it. So I shot this on my Snappy Happy, which is a Canon. That Canon connects to my phone via a cool little app. So once I got the picture on my phone, I like to use Photo Toaster. That's my favorite um, Photoshop-y editing tool on the phone. Now I do not uh, think every photograph needs to have Photoshop. I do think every photograph could use a little bit of contrast um, and maybe upping the exposure a little bit because phones are taking an average. We're not using light meters. As you guys know, you're mostly professionals. So this is how I do it on Photo Toaster. 
first of all, I get a manicure. No, I'm just kidding. I double check that the photo is on there and it's not quite right. So then I go and open my little photo toaster. Isn't that a cute little icon? I go in my photo library and there's the photo. Well, obviously the photo has come in with all this garbage around it. So we need to crop it first. So we go ahead and crop it. There we go. Now we have the photograph. So as I said, a little bit, little bit lighter, and then we'll add some contrast. That's too much. Nope, oh, oh, too much, too much. Oh, no way. We can look at the shadows. I want to show you what it means to add the shadows and the highlights. We don't need to. We can bring a little bit of the highlights back because the texture of the lemon skin, but it's not necessary. One thing that I would do, and I did all the time in the dark room, is dodge and burn. So what I love about Photo Toaster, again, not sponsored, is that with my finger very gently, I can just, my phone's kind of dirty, sorry about that. I can highlight and burn in. So then I'm getting this dramatic picture that I wanted to get earlier. Now I'm still not happy because the table, yeah, I'm gonna lighten around the table so I can really work on this shape, which is what I was after. I was after this shape. Then I'm actually pretty happy. So let's save it. And voila, the final photograph. So there you go. Um, that is my sort of way to do it. So I'm gonna take a few questions before we get to the workshop. Um, let's see here. Where do you, from Lena and Neil, where do you recommend starting when it comes to getting into film? Oh boy, that's a hard question. I mean, Lena, it depends on how you're gonna develop it. I used to use Ilford FP4 and HP5. That was my favorite film, black and white. And then I used um, Tri-X for color. And then I used Chrome. What was the Chrome? Can't even remember. Um, so I would recommend figuring out how you're gonna process things and who can process them. Because I remember when I actually uh, had to close my dark room because the chemicals were gone. So I would say that first of all, um, figure out how you're gonna process. And then, I mean, the interwebs is your best friend. Go and look and see what the quality looks like. Do you want a film that is super grainy? Then go for a higher ISO. Or do you want, you know, much flatter? Then go for a 100. Do you want it to be one of those films that really, really takes the textures and the, you know, is vibrant or not. I mean, those are easy to find out. And also if you go to a Photoshop, I'll bet it's like when you go shopping for stockings, sorry, gentlemen, you could probably like put your hand <laughs> and check it out. Um, so Elaine Kerr asks, do you think it's important to learn studio photography? I live in a small apartment in New York, do not have access to one currently. Your, your studio is your studio, Elaine. You can learn anywhere. Um, I think it's about learn, thinking about what you want to accomplish. For example, do you want to take a bowl of lemons and make them look blown out? Well then put light behind. Do you want to make them look stark? Put a light in front. Do you what do you want? And then you can figure out how to get it. And a lot of these places like KM are very inexpensive to rent lights. You can rent one or two light. And only if that's going to serve you in your work. Nothing is required. Um, that's my um, uh, opinion. Um, Shall we do some more here? Wow, lots of them are rolling in, guys. Um, what software do you use to edit on desktop and why? From Molly Schinsheimer. Um, I use Capture One. I, I pull my pictures in Capture One. I do not shoot tethered because I'm not a dog. And I shoot to card. And that's my favorite. And I use Photoshop afterwards for each, um, each image. Um, 
So, oh boy, Tiara Gordon, I don't know. Hi again. Where do you store the photos? Um, that is so hard. But I do have to say one of my favorite. So this is my workflow. I take a picture. I it goes into Capture One. I edit the picture. After I edit the picture, I put it. You know, I I, I process it. Then I save it. I save it on a RAID, a hard drive, and I also use Photo Shelter. And Photo Shelter is where I store all my archives. And it is a service that's you know in the interweb heaven. And it is a tremendous resource for being able to keep your photographs there and send them for wherever you are in the world. So for example, if you're in Zimbabwe and a client needs a picture that you shot six years ago, go on photo shelter. I really, I, I think they're just a fantastic, a fa fantastic tool. Um, well, Mara Christie wants to know, what would you say the difference is between shooting uh, with the camera you keep mentioning and an iPhone? Good question. Um, well, I think that uh, the quality is a little bit better, but I bet the people that, um, you know, I, that would be disputed. I also like the feeling and the tradition of the camera. And sometimes I don't want to take my phone everywhere. And I sort of say, oh, I have to take my phone because I need my camera. So the fact that I can transfer between them, which apparently I think you can do on most um, cameras now, just makes it like so much more, um, you know, fun for me. Um, so let's start the workshop and then we can go back to some questions. So I um, have the first person is Christine James. And I think uh, Christine is definitely getting on my good side with all of this purple um, because I love purple. So Christine, these are beautiful pictures. Thank you so much for sending them in. Um, I love flowers and I love purple. I love what you did on the right here. Um, this is so beautiful seeing all these textures. And I, I think it's so great that you focused right on the center part of the purple um, hydrangea. My only wish is that you had come in, moved in a little closer. So maybe we wouldn't have to see these legs, but you could, you know, I love seeing this leaf here, but maybe, um, I would prefer not to be so distracted. And same with the middle picture. I mean, that's gorgeous, that peony that's alive and the other one that's sort of drooping. Just get in a little bit closer because these are really pretty and I love how much you have um, really taken time like to appreciate the textures and the colors and the light. I mean, your respect for light is fantastic. Um, why don't we just take a little question and then we can go to Tiffany, who's next. Um, so Karina Rojo asks, what are your tricks for creating sunlighting out of strobes for an interior shoot? Well, why don't we go back? We're gonna go back for a second and look at my lighting diagram because I think that answers it. So first let's look at these subjects, right? That's what sunshine would do if sunshine came from one side. So let's see how I did it. I put one light up here and one light here. I had another one in the back because otherwise it's gonna look like completely dark. Cause remember, if you remember anything from this entire conversation, um, light travels in straight lines. So if you think about the light coming straight here, do, 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 do. I have some fill lights here because we don't want it to be all black and a little bit of light from behind. So I think that is the best way to answer that um, question. So Allison Twally, what if you don't have good lighting in your home? I don't either. I'm using a ring light. I mean, it's, it's, it's 649 and it's been dark in Chicago from, I mean, in New York since 5 PM. So um, you can make lighting. I mean, make it, you can, when, you know how when you sit at a restaurant and somebody wants to photograph their piece of food, turn on your, um, turn on your flashlight. And if the flashlight's too bright, cover it with your napkin so that it diffuses it and makes a little soft box. You can make light anywhere, sister. I promise. I, I know you can. Okay, let's go. Tiffany, are you there? You're up. I'm excited. 
Hey, Melanie, we're going to bring her up now. So just take just a second. Fantastic. Yay, I don't have to be alone anymore. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Hi, hi, who's with you? Um, I've got lots of dogs <laughs> and uh, my friend Megan is with me. Hi guys, hi. Hello. Are you in Palm Springs? I wish. Oh, me too. We're in, uh, we're in DC. <laughs> oh, um, I wish I, I looked at these pictures earlier and I was like, these are Palm Springs. I know because I was there last year exactly at this time. So oh, it, uh, yes, I was there in um, March. It's so beautiful. I had never been there before except for like a minute to do a shoot indoors. So um, I thought, I think these are so beautiful. I mean, immediately they transported me. I think you did such a nice job here on this third one with like, cause the, you know, the place just is doppled light. It should be called like Palm Springs doppled light. Um, and I love the shapes. Like I think the first picture and the third picture, you do such a nice composition where you're using the color and the shape. And it, it's almost like what you're shooting is irrelevant. You're just, you know, making such a statement, which I really, really love. Thank you. Um, do you have any questions? Um, and you don't have to. <laughs> yeah, I'm caught. I'm caught off guard because I, I was like, I didn't know it was going to be picked. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, of course. Well, I let's carry on. So, um, tell me about the fourth picture. Is um, that so like that? Is actually at a. It's a gas station in Joshua Tree, um, and it turned. They turned it into a boutique. Oh, um, cool! I was really that. Cool. Yeah, so that's outside of, of the gas station and it was around like three o'clock and I walked outside of the store and the way the light was hitting um, the pots, I was just like, I have to take a picture right now. No, totally. Um, I love it. It's such a story. Like I love it with the truck and it makes sense now. I yes. couldn't tell that there was a truck in the back and like, yeah, I see it now. That's yeah. so cool. I love it. I mean, you're, 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 I love, you know, that's the whole thing. I mean, like, Photography is made up of so many things, but it's nothing without light. So the fact that you're just res respecting the light, whether however it is, like for example, as I've mentioned 35 times, I'm using this ring light, but I don't have the ring light facing me. I have the ring light facing a white wall, which is why, I mean, you can't really see it in my glasses like you would have. You can kind of see it when I lean like that, what I'm talking about, Yeah. but I'm trying to sit up straight and hide that. <laughs> Well, this is awesome. Do you only do landscapes? No. So I, I'm like, I guess I'm, I, I'm, I have fear of my photography skills um, because I, I'm self-taught. So um, I'm kind of branching out into it. I, I do it a little bit on the side. So I got a new camera. I went to a conference in Palm Springs last year for creative entrepreneurs. And I was like, let me just go out and, and practice. Um, and so that's what a lot of these shots are, was me practicing. Um, so yeah, I would love to do, um, like portraits and, and other, other, uh, subjects. You just got to practice girl. Like, honestly, don't be, I mean, everybody, I'm insecure. Everybody's insecure. I have like sweat stains down to here before a shoot. Like, <laughs> I mean, it's normal. I mean, that's normal. Cause you don't know so many things are out of your control, but you don't, you know, practice, practice, practice. And, you know, uh, I don't know if you're going to stay on, but at the end, I, I give some names of some people's work to go check out. And okay. I think, you know, it's like, look at the pictures. Why do you like them? And like, you know, try to try it out. That's all I can say. Yeah. Cause you'll never know unless you try, right? That's right. Totally. And you're off to an awesome start. So forget for that. Me. No more insecurity done. <laughs> Thank you so much. It was so nice to meet you. Okay, let's do another question. Eh? Um, let's see here. Oh, um, how do you make people feel comfortable in front of the camera? That is a very good question, Sabrina. Um, I guess I tend to talk a lot, in case you haven't noticed. <laughs> I think that um, it's very intimidating to have a black box shoved in your face. And our goal is to make people feel relaxed and show themselves. So I do spend 
a fair bit of time at the very beginning just talking to people, but I'm actually talking about nonsense. At, and after the shoot, you would, I'd be hard pressed to tell you what I talked about because all I'm doing is observing how they carry themselves if they're looking me in the eye. Um, so I think that that is very important. Um, so that's what I would say about that. Um, are we ready for our next victim? Rashad, are yeah. you ready? Yeah, up right now. Okay. Um, let's let me. Hello. Hello. Hi. Okay. How are you? <laughs> I am changing my name immediately to awesome. <laughs> and I'm sure you've never heard that before, but I'm serious. <laughs> I actually have six names already. I have four middle names, but I can squeeze another one in for sure. I have another middle name as well. I just, I tend to use the one because the What's other one, the other one? Like Lindell, but my dad gave that to all of his sons. Oh, so often it's more like okay, my That's name. so amazing. <laughs> I've actually never heard of naming all your sons the same name. That's genial. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Where are you right now? I'm in New York, in Brooklyn. Oh, yeah. me too, me too, hi. So where did you take these pictures? Do you mind, to, are, I, I, if you feel on the spot, I can just talk, but if you don't, fine. tell us about them. Um, the first shot I took at East River Park um, in Manhattan. And the second shot I took at Lower East Side Skate Park. Yes, um, I thought that would look familiar. Yeah, <laughs> and the first one, it was a, um, this was a whole photo shoot I was doing with a friend, and this was one of the photos that um, I ended up really liking, and then the second one was more um, street, like, I didn't uh -huh. know these people. Um, I had another shoot that day, and I just saw a lot of bikers um, coming to the skate park, so I just started um, shooting them while ending the other shoot I had, and this was also a really nice shot that I enjoy um, from that day. Totally. I mean, that's so hard. I've had that. One time I had five shoots mm -hmm. it was for New York Magazine. It was right after 9-11 and we had a car and I had to go from one to the, it's so hard to, you have to really focus, don't you? You have to be like, I'm not thinking about the next shoot, except I have six alarms set so that I know I have to leave in time. <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. Like totally. that sounds like a lot, five sheets in a day. Um, <laughs> and um, like, well, I'm, I'm, I'm very like, uh, um, go with the flow, just like see what comes to me. Like pictures just come to me as I'm walking and I'm just like, that would be a nice photo. So just like, <sighs> well, one, how do you like um, schedule so many shoots in a day? Is it like, is that more so you doing it or um, did it just like happen that way? Where it's like. Usually it just happens that way. Um, but I, um, when I'm working on my own books or something, I need to, if I have a photo assistant or two and I have lights and I have a, you know, a car, I wanna try to like get two shoots for the price of one, except mm -hmm. the assistants. I never do that with my assistants, but you know, I wanna try to like maximize my value because I only have a set amount of money to use, um, but I don't mind doing it. I just, you know, it does occupy a little bit of your mental <laughs> space to do it. But I think what you said was something that a lot of questions keep coming up and you're absolutely right. Like the point of it is, if you see something and you're attracted to it, shoot it. Yes, yeah. And then shoot it from this angle, shoot it from that angle, shoot it upside down, <laughs> mm -hmm. <Exhibit> A, <laughs> shoot it, you know, shoot it. I love the picture. I mean, the moment between those two boys is awesome. You know, I can't, I, I just keep thinking like, what's next? <laughs> like a triple wheelie or something, <laughs> like, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's um, a very nice moment. And I love the, um, the sensitivity of the hand um, on your friend. I think that's really lovely. Next Thank time, you. get him to, to shoot naked. <laughs> no, I would love to do a nude photo shoot. Um, like, so I grew up as a dancer. So oh, dance wow. photography comes like naturally to me. Um, so yeah, just the human body and the human figure is like something I'm really interested mm -hmm. in. So 
um, yeah, I'm, I'm totally <laughs> up for that. Right, right. That's so cool. I can't wait to see those. <laughs> we'll be sitting down next time and you'll be like, hi, awesome. And I'll be like, hi, awesome. <laughs> when I change my name. <laughs> well, thank you for sending these in and for chatting with me. So I'm not just chatting. It feels like I'm talking to myself for an hour. So thank you so much. It was really nice to meet you. Thank you. You're welcome. Nice. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. Um, okay. Uh, shall we go to Rachel or shall we answer a question? Either way, we can, we're setting up Rachel now if you'd like to okay. answer some questions. Um, so Lamine Swan wants to know lenses to have on hand. Well, you know, I, I mean, who doesn't love a fixed lens because it's so pin sharp, but that gets expensive and heavy. So I travel with a 28 to 70 zoom with my Canons and a 70 to, I think it's 210. And then I have a fixed 85 for, and then a 110 for portraits. So I'm carrying four lenses and two bodies to every shoot, sometimes three. So it's heavy, but you know, in a dream world, if I ruled the world and people came to me and I was Irving Penn, I'd have all fixed lenses because they're so much sharper. Um, so um, if you're photographing, Maura Christi, Christy wants to know, if you're photographing strangers, do you ask their permission first or not? So I have a very good friend who's a photographer and she um, insisted that I get easy release on my phone, but you know, I don't use it that often. Um, when I do, I did a, a, a personal project in a place and I put disclaimers on the door when it's a professional, you know, a photo shoot that's commissioned, they always have a model release, but technically we really should be doing that. And I hear easy release is great, though I don't, I have to say sometimes I forget, which is just the truth. Um, so um, have I ever, do, have I ever shot with music playing? Yes, Sophia Tibbs, I have. Um, one time actually earlier I showed you the comedian with the, um, balloon bow tie. So before he arrived, we were listening to Bob Marley, but I knew he wouldn't like Bob Marley because he plays a, uh, he plays the, um, what's that called? Some sort of little guitar. I can't think of the name right now. I'll remember it at 4 a.m. Um, and he walked in and he's like, what's this music? And I was like, you were early, you know, dude, like, give me a break. But um, I do, but I do try to figure out or think about what music the person would like because Rachel Ray loves the food, Foo Fighters, but I don't know if Katie Kirk is gonna like the Food Fighters, Foo Fighters. So I do try to sort of customize a little bit to the best of my ability, or I ask them. Um, so that's always a good one. Um, and then- Hey Melanie, um, we have um, Rachel. Um, oh, okay, hi Rachel. Rachel, hi, where are you? I'm in Philly. Oh, lucky you. So much good food in Philly. Oh, yes. <laughs> I wish we were at Zahav right now. Oh, the best. I know. Or at least eating donuts at Federal Donuts. Yeah, for sure. So are you, um, is this your job photography? Yeah. So these are just my personal photography kind of ideas. Um, a lot of it goes on Instagram. And then I do some like professional food photography for the infatuation. Oh, cool. So they send me around to restaurants, or they used to. Now I get like takeout because of COVID. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah oh, so I got like, a nice variety of kind of chefs to work with, kind of street food, which is nice. So, oh, that's so cool. Well, I love it. This is perfect for the infatuation, too. I love their photography. It's so, well, I, I, basically, I love your photography. <laughs> I love these. I think they're so cool. Are these um, particular? I was trying to figure out earlier are they um, Italian or is it? The, yeah, like the neon green one is, and then the right. other one I think was Colombian snacks. My friend oh. got me, a, I think it's Universal Yums. It's like a snack box, like a monthly thing. Oh, cool. So she got me a box, and as soon as I opened it, I was like, oh, this is like Technicolor candy. I love it. So totally. I was like, I'll take a photo before I eat everything. Well, what I love so much is that you open stuff, you have wrappers, you have hands grabbing. I mean, that's the thing, right? We want to make it look yummy. I mean, mm -hmm. I often think about that with, with food photography. It's like, what makes this good? It's not necessarily a beautiful plate and great lighting. I mean, great li natural light and napkins. And it's like, does it look delicious or not? <laughs> right? Yeah. Does it make like, you want to dive in and actually start right. eating it? What's your, you tell us your tips because you're doing such a good job. Like, how did you approach this? 
Um, I literally just ripped bags open and just dumped them. I think a lot, like before when I would do stuff, I'd make it really sterile and try to make it perfect. Right. I like kind of just like plating things perfectly, but I always feel like it looks better when it's kind of a mess. Right. Like it actually looks like what it would look like if you ate it. Right, 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 right. I I like herbs everywhere. Pasta, not necessarily like perfectly in the center of the plate. Like. No, totally. So what about, um, tell me, because I have really hard time shooting meat. Yeah. Sometimes it will look kind of like gray and flaccid. So I'll usually edit it and capture one to like make it look nice and charred. Right. But also getting like some sort of like side light to highlight it. Like those like spectral highlights, I guess people Mm -hmm. call them. Yeah. Yeah. Flex like for the old school. Yeah. Make it look like shiny and a little greasy. Um, I was just earlier showing on Instagram how I, um, that I received thanks to Lizzie, who's the brainchild of this masterclass, a ring light and how I was like, oh my God, you could see it in my glasses. My huge forehead looks even bigger. And I turned it around. So it's actually facing the wall and giving me like a huge spread. And it so made like a big bounce light. Behind you. If you look behind me, you can see it reflecting. You see oh, it yeah, yeah. against the wall. So it's like I have a, shim- a huge shimera there. But um, it is true that like, um, you know, you, you can make it do. You get this big box, you open it up, you make do. It's awesome. Do you have any questions for me? And you don't yeah, have Yeah, you kind of touched on it with the Rachel Ray thing, but I uh-huh. wanted to know if you had any like, one of the things that gets me really anxious about stuff is like equipment failures. Luckily I have not had like a catastrophic one yet, but like, how do you like a prepare for them? Have you ever dealt with them? Like, what do you do? Oh my God. I like, I literally feel sometimes when I walk out of a shoot that my head has turned gray. (laughs) Like my hair has turned gray. Um, Yes. I I would, I was going to say with the ring light. So I put on my Instagram story last night. Oh, look, this is what I would do with the ring. This is what I'm going to do with the ring light. And then a chef direct messaged me and said, Oh, that's a great tip. Thank you. Um, Cause sometimes I don't look so great. And I said, also like, it can't hurt to just put something white here because it helps instantly. Look at my shirt. It just helps bring up the light. So that brings me to this one time I was shooting this cover of Newsweek and it was this guy in um, Minnesota. And when I arrived, the equipment hadn't arrived. I mean, it was an inside shoot on a rainy gray day and I was just literally crapping my pants. I hope I can say that on this forum. And I, I just, you know what I did? I went and got pieces of paper and glued them together and took him to a window and put like a flex basically like right here to try to fill it in somehow. I mean, you, the show must go on. You mm-hmm. have to make it work. So I always have, as I said, um, four lenses with me. I always have two, um, you know, bodies. I always have two computers, extra card readers. But again, like, you know, it, it shit happens. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it does. And I actually had an incident happen last year, right before the pandemic started, where I was so mesmerized with this artist that I completely forgot to shoot her paintings. Duh. And I was like, holy shit, I forgot to shoot her paintings. Like, they're going to want to, it's like you shooting the chef and forgetting the food. <laughs> so I, I actually asked, I, like called her and I was like, can I come back? I'm so sorry. I forgot to shoot. I'm the village idiot. I forgot to shoot the paintings and she let me. So, I mean, there are failures and there are, and we just, everybody's human and they can't take it too seriously, you know? Yeah. So don't sweat it. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Well, thank you. It was so nice to meet you. I'm excited to follow you. Your work is beautiful. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. Ciao, ciao. All right, well, that is the um, last thing. I'm gonna ask if I should do some more questions, but in the meanwhile, if you aren't interested in the questions, I just wanna give you my few pieces of advice, which are literally shoot, 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 practice, practice, practice. Like it is just key to do that because then you, it's trial and error, right? Um, some people's work that I just love for classic lighting, which a lot of the questions were about, is 
I just loved um, Karsh of Ottawa. I mean, look at him on Instagram. I mean, he's passed away, but he, his um, thing is still going. He, he, his account is still going with his foundation. It's just a masterclass in lighting. I also, um, David Bailey, if you ever saw the movie Blow Up, he was the protagonist in that. Um, Peter Lindbergh does a, tried to cover like a little range here. Peter Lindbergh is a great photographer, fashion, and he does a lot of Harper's Bazaar covers and it, they'll be like shot from across the street with a super long lens with something in the way. And then you'll see like Naomi Campbell walking. It's very edgy. And I am on Instagram and Twitter and all those things with my name. Um, you can check out my future projects and my work on my website. Um, but for those who want to hang around, let's answer a few more questions until Lizzie, by the way, thank you. And thank you creatively classes for having me. And until um, Lizzie bangs the gong, we can answer some more questions. So um, let's hear it. All right. So Christina Gregon, where do you find inspiration when you're feeling completely blocked and uninspired? Okay, well, number one, I read this great book over Christmas and I just bought 40 copies. In fact, I'm gonna show it to you. This book is called Creatively. It was a gift that I got for Christmas. Can you see it? And it's by John Cleese. He was from um, the show Monty Python. And it's a short and cheerful guide to creativity because we all feel blocked. I mean, I sit here, I'm working on a book right now. Sometimes I look down and there's one word there. I'm not kidding. And sometimes I can't stop. So I think we need to respect our rhythms and our like, um, you know, productivity. If you're not on deadline, I mean, I would make goals. I would make... But if you um, can't, if it's not happening, go for a walk, make a sandwich, then get back to it. But you got to give yourself a break. And often like I'm working on, I just was making a list of five things right now. And some of them are in the front at some times and some of them are in the back and some of them are in the side and you got to let them breathe. So I think that's sort of my um, bi biggest piece of advice for that. Um, Let's see here. Um, uh, for people who wear glasses, do you, this is from Ray Nicholas. Do you ever feel worried the photo isn't crisp or photograph or focused? Any tips on how to make sure what you are seeing is what is captured? Well, um, that's a good question. I guess the most important thing is when you're looking through your viewfinder to just make sure that it's calibrated and what you see is what you see. I don't actually need glasses for to see far. I need them to read. So I actually have, per, what are they called? Per whatever, per? Prescription? No. When they go up and down, I can't remember what, not prescription. They're prescription, <laughs> but the half is prescription, the top isn't. So I think as long as you're calibrate, so exactly what you see is what you see, you should be good. Don't worry about that. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Um, uh, oh, what was one of my favorite shoots and why? Elaine Kerr. Hmm. Oh boy, so many. Um, what was one of my favorite shoots? I'm gonna go with, um, I love shooting the comedian and who knows why this came into my mind. The comedian, the late comedian, um, Bernie Mac. He had such a great sense of humor and he was really naughty. So I had this idea to get a zipper and put it across his face. So it'd be like, Bernie Mac needs to stop being so funny. That was a really good one. Um, so, um, Pierre Mathieu asks, I left photography for a while. How do you keep up with the new trends and tech? I don't as much as I should. And that's where, you know, for every question about the new camera and the new lens, I keep up as much as I need to. Um, I do try occasionally to look on, you know, at some stories on American photography. I get that uh, email every day. I, sometimes I look through it. Um, I kind of only believe that you need what you need, the tools and the objects to create what you need. 
So there's a great photographer who I assisted for a time called Frank Ockenfels III, and he had all these different cameras. So he's taking, he's using an eight by 10, he's using a Mamiya RZ, he's using a Hasselblad. And I was like, so impressed by that, but that's not my style. My style is same type of camera. It used to be a Hasselblad, now it's a Canon. I keep things very classic and traditional. Um, so let's see here. Um, uh, Chloe Brover, I was wondering how you went about building your own career and finding clients after assisting photographers. I guess, um, you know, that just took time. I, what I don't like, and I've seen happen many times, is when my assistants give their cards to my clients. That is a total no-no. I have suggested previous assistants for jobs. And if you're on my good side, I would do that in a heartbeat. So I think that helps, you know, jobs that I can't do. Um, and I also, you know, remember working a lot for free, but back then now, I mean, now everyone seems to work for free and there's no money, but I would do a lot of like um, somebody's family reunion photos or somebody's portrait for their, for lawyers weekly or stuff like that. So, um, you know, I would just try, try, shoot, shoot, say yes. That being said to the free um, issue, I have an issue with uh, not being paid anything to shoot and I won't do it. So for example, magazines now and a lot of uh, clients, you know, can get people to shoot for free. So they, why should they shoot for you? So if we all kind of decide that we're not going to do that, we can support each other. And I think that's a very important um, thing to consider when you start your career. Um, so let's do two more and let's see. Um, oh, Molly, this isn't such a compliment. I have to read it. It says, I love your shooting style, Melanie. Where, how can we see more of it? Um, you can go to my website, which I know have a lot of vowels in my name, but it's melaniedunay.com. You can follow me on Instagram and also right here on Creatively, because this is a fantastic forum for all of us to exchange and share and collaborate. So um, there are three places right there. Um, and let's do one last one. Um, Rose says, pick me, pick me, but I don't, oh, okay, I see the question. Leaving the big events, leaving the world big events finally, thanks COVID, and have been building my portrait and commercial book. Have done work with studios, know my gear, and feel okay about my book. What's the one suggestion to make the leap fully into commercial? You gotta get hired, man. <laughs> Rose, that's it. I mean, somebody, Listen, every time, like every time somebody hires you, it's a chance to get hired again, right? I mean, why do people shoot for magazines? You don't make money. You shoot for magazines to have your name seen so that Baby Wipes hires you or Campari hires you. So just try to get published. Try to show the world exactly what you can do because I'm sure it's amazing. So thank you guys so much. I had so much fun. I mean, I babbled and babbled and babbled. I'm sorry I couldn't answer every question. You can DM me and I can try later. Um, Lizzie, thank you so much for having me. It was awesome. And I hope that I um, gave you guys the confidence to just go and practice and shoot and shoot because that you're with that, you'll be on your way. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and, you know, keep shooting.